I am a Bay Area freelance editor and a Final Cut Studio trainer. And I'm also the author of a few uh, books on motion. And I'm going to show you a little bit of tips today, just a quick tip on how to use motion to create some background elements. Now here in motion, one thing that's really great is all the content in the library. So if you look in the library, in the content folder, there's about 1,500 different items that you can pull from to build your projects. I'm in the drawing section here. I don't select one of these. These are all little animated drawings made from simple shapes in motion. So if I click apply, I can bring that little shape in and I have a quick little animated stroke that I can use in my composition. Now I want to take it a little bit further than that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop playback, right click on it and choose the anchor point tool in order to put the anchor point at the bottom of this object. And you'll see why in just a minute that I'm doing this. Then I'll switch back to my transform tool. I'm going to move this up and scale it down a little bit and use these, these dynamic guides to try to center it in the middle of our composition right about there. There we go. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to replicate it. The cool thing about using these shapes and using any content from the library is the ability to replicate or add particle emitters or do something else with them. So I'm going to click the replicate button, which will make many copies, and then over in the inspector, Rather than replicating into this square here in this rectangle, I'm going to replicate into a line. But rather than have a long line, I'm going to have a very short line, about as short as you can have. I'm going to put zero, zero in for everything. So now I've got five copies of this little drawing on top of each other. I'm going to crank that up to 12. And I have 12 copies on top of each other, which doesn't look too interesting. But once we go ahead, let me just move this replicator so it starts at the beginning of the project here. And if I go ahead and adjust the angle and parameter, I can spread these guys out and create a nice little graphic there just by moving that over. Now we have a nice little graphic to work with. And then to take it one step further, what I'll do now is just animate this on because by default, if I play this back, we get a nice little animation, bang, just by replicating a little drawing, getting it out there. And we can take it one step further. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and set a keyframe for this angle end parameter, the one I changed by option clicking right here in the menu. Then I'll bring back to the beginning the playhead and option click again in the animation menu, set another keyframe. And now, instead, in addition to drawing on, I just need to set that initial keyframe back to zero. And now if I play back, we're animating both the angle of that drawing as it appears, as well as the drawing command itself. So literally in a matter of just a few seconds, you can create an animation by taking some pre-built pieces from the library and replicating them, making copies, and playing around with some of the parameters and maybe adding a little more animation. So that's a little tip. Um, if you want to know more about motion, check out applemotion.net, which will give you a lot of information and resources about how to use motion. So have fun. I'm Mark Spencer. Take it easy.